Hello and welcome everyone to the Gabrielle Spencer Show. This is Gabrielle Spencer. You are in a great place today when you're listening to this show because we have Lisa Barnett here for you. She is an amazing woman, a leader. She is blessed with the great ability to tap into your soul's Akashic Records to assist you to step into your highest and best, your greatest soul's path and destiny. And with all of her experience, the many, many years, more than 30, could be even more than that, she, she knows what things mean, how to interpret it, and how to assist you to move through your greatest blocks. Because when we're in that place of being blocked or feeling like we don't know where to go or what to do, having someone like Lisa in your corner helps you to move through it rather than thinking about it and pondering it forever and never getting anywhere. Right, Lisa? That's what happens. When you tap into someone like Lisa to assist you, you get to move through that faster. And today we are here to talk about something that she is putting together. And I'm so excited for her because this is a course and I'm just going to tell you what it's about. It's called Discover your Akashic records, communicate with the record keepers of your soul's journey, clear karma, and deepen your intuition. And we're going to pester her with questions today because we really want to get to the bottom of why this matters, how it applies to where we are in current times, and whatever else comes through as she is talking with us today. So thank you for being here, Lisa. Thank you, Gabrielle, so much for having me on. I am thrilled that you're with me again. I absolutely love your wisdom. It is so gentle but meaningful. And I think that's really important right now. It's important for us just to spit it out, get it out there and do it in a way that people can understand. And that's what I really love about you and what it is that you have to share. So I wanna start with the first question. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So I know that you've guided thousands of spiritual seekers to access their Akashic records and the record keepers. Can you share a poignant story from one of those clients' experiences and how it shifted things for them? Oh, I know, of I got course. You. Let me just, I? Right, let me find one. Um, so I teach this as a seven week workshop or um, sometimes I travel around and I'll do a weekend workshop with students to actually teach them to open their very own Akashic records and talk to their record keepers. I believe it's so important because it's easy transformation. Honestly, when you can hear, receive direct specific guidance on next steps to take, it can change your life really with, with great ease. And I'll tell you some other stories about that later. But I had a student um, once, she was, she was a woman who came and heard me speak at a big expo in San Francisco. And she signed up for my class and she was really, really shy. And I even remember her coming to see me and talk to me at another smaller event that I was doing. And she kind of walked by and saw that I was talking to people and kept on walking. Like she didn't stop and say hello. She had taken my workshop, but she was still really shy. But it was really interesting because she started practicing using her Akashic records asking her record keepers about some of the whys. Why am I so shy? What am I afraid of? What's holding me back? And she started to get some really useful information and was able to clear some old stuck energy from past lives in which she was um, had vowed to stay hidden back when she was, say, part of a, a, a druid or pagan kind of group. Mm -hmm. And um, so she had a couple of vows about literally staying hidden and unseen. And this was creating this shyness. So she went on and took my second workshop. So I teach you how to open the records. And then in the second course, 
we go deep into all this information about past lives and who you've been and the soul plan you wrote. You know, when you came here to earth, you made a plan. You had people you wanted to work with. You had things you wanted to do. You had talents you wanted to share. Anyway, what I found was after working with me and working in the Akashic Records for a couple of months, she started to, you know, step up, step out, uh, kind of drop some of the shyness. She, she went on eventually, she's, she's now one of my Akashic Record teachers. She went through all the courses, became a certified consultant, became a teacher with my school, Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom. And she actually gets out there and teaches this work now. So she went from a, just a, a shy, shy, sweet, hidden little soul to really stepping out and doing her own soul's work. That's amazing. That's such a beautiful story because I think that people have many aspects of themselves that they you know, wish that they didn't, but they don't actually realize that there's a deeper root reason for why they are that way. And so that story explains it, that, you know, if something as simple as being shy. I know for myself, I was afraid of heights and never thought anything about it. And after I began my own healing many years ago, one day I had to climb up onto my, the roof, uh, the first flat roof of my home to see what the roofer was going to show me, right? And what was so bizarre is that without any thought, I just climbed up the ladder and hopped on the roof. And then I realized, holy cow, I never would have done that before. And I realized that in the healing, that was just one of the things that was released. So we, I mean, even something as in, inane as that, like it actually has a root cause somewhere and it's held within you in your energetic field. So that's just a fabulous story. I love it because I know many people who are listening are wanting to get out there or wondering why they're not able to or things aren't moving their way when that's what they really want. So that's just another uh, area for them to think about or to uh, ask for help with. So I really wanna know too, the difference between Akashic Records and the Record Keepers. Like, what does that mean to you? Cause I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so the, the records are the recording of your soul's journey throughout time. So it would be um, if you imagine that you always walked around with a GoPro video strapped to your head and everything you did and saw and, and were and experienced were recorded in a video. And then that was all uploaded every day to the iCloud and, and there it was. You could go back and um, review any video from the time you were born um, and even further, right? So of course this goes back into uh, past lives on this earth and other worlds. Right. So it's like having your own library. So the Akashic record is the recording, it's the library, it's the video. The record keepers are the librarians. They are the beings of light that are here to help you and support you in reading those records with greater ease. So you don't have to tumble around and like, but there's millions of videos here, right? Or millions of books here. How do I find the one I want? You get to go ask your Akashic librarians and say, um, I'm trying to figure out what is, you know, blocking me from stepping out into the world. And they'll, oh, this book, you know, this life where you got killed for speaking your truth, this life where you took a vow of, um, you know, to, to stay hidden, um, this life oh, sure. where <laughs> there's yes. some people that you know if you belong to mystery schools you were sworn to not share or divulge information which makes it really hard if you're going to be a teacher in this modern day right yep. right <laughs> absolutely and these are the vows i'm talking about so when we swore that's making a vow so we took vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience when we became nuns or priests or monks throughout time. Right. And often that's, again, that is um, where some of our abundance issues come for all these healers and light workers. Because you said, I will not take money for my gifts. Right. Which or you will only, only barter and trade or just take food. Right. Right, or you lived in a, in a convent or in a monastery and you were fed and 
and you know, my, <laughs> and you would shelter, you know. This is so, the first word that comes to me is tragic because this is a simple fix. That's a simple fix. And that's, the tragic piece is that it is such a simple fix in order to heal that and handle it as you're talking about. And the, rather than just living your life trying to beat it, you know, trying to get over it uh, by either talking yourself through it or, you know, banging your head against the wall, trying to get something to happen for you. And so just that alone and finding out what your contracts are, you know, which ones don't serve you anymore in this lifetime. That's super huge. Right. Absolutely. I mean, we have written so many things about who we want to be and what we want to do. And some of those soul contracts have karma attached. And that means I have come to learn something from this relationship. And when we're oblivious to it, sometimes we just get pissed and walk away and we have not learned the lesson. We haven't completed the karma and that's going to happen again and again and again until we get it. So sometimes clients will come to me and they say, I realize that I'm stuck in this kind of negative relationship pattern. Everybody I call to me is whatever this type of person or, or I have that kind of experience. And it's because it's actually a karmic pattern you're trying to learn from, but you haven't realized it yet. Wow. Uh, that is true. It's a karmic <laughs> pattern. And here's the issue that I see too for people is that the more that you experience and trigger a lesson, sort of the more mired in new lessons you become. It adds lessons, it adds layers of lessons, right? And so it's not any longer just that you know, main piece that started the whole chain of events. You actually end up creating new issues for yourself. And that's sort of, I wanna say, the danger of not tapping in and finding out what's really going on because you then are in danger of continuing the cycle. And, and for some people might, the, I've heard people say things like, well, it wasn't so as bad as blank experience. Right. And it, but it was still bad, but then, you know, I, in, in addition, I might have um, become really sick. Um, so that was where it was different than maybe in another. So then you already know that now that the cycles happen so many times that now you've triggered health issues. That's now going to be added to the stress of whatever the situation was that you keep repeating. And that's what I mean by the layering of issues, which is just, just tells the people, this is our explanation for why it matters. Why does this matter to people? Yeah. Oh, and it's, it's really huge that way because what the record keepers say is, is that most people take somewhere around 600 to 800 lives here <laughs> on earth alone to unravel that mess we make. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I mean, that is a lot of lives to unravel, you know, yeah. an issue or, a, you know, a deep seated issue that generally might have to, let's say, to do with love or abundance. And, you know, everybody, what I find often happens is people put all their attention on the symptom, but actually the root cause is not, it doesn't have anything to do with the symptom. Like we talked about the oath and vow of poverty. That's just one layered to that piece. That piece generally goes deeper and it has more to do with what do you find it has more to do with? I have my theory based on my clients, but you tell me what you feel that that actually really comes down to for people. Well, you know, depending on the person and all of the other yeah. things, the issues. So it can be the, um, the fear of being seen, right? It can yes. be a, a lack of love because when we yeah. have, when we take a vow um, of poverty, we relate it to money, but then you think about the other vows that often go with that, like chastity and obedience, 
Mm -hmm. right? So that can, that can wreak havoc with um, relationships, with money, with fear of being seen, you know, with creating a business or bringing your talents out or standing up and speaking your own truth. So in the end, it can make a mess of kind of everything. <laughs> it kind That's of touches it. everything in a lot of ways. It's like a cork in a bottle. I've always explained healing work as take a champagne bottle, right? And when you release the cork, all the, the effervescence comes up, right? And we see all those bubbles coming up. And to me, that's what's being healed, right? It's rising to the surface to be healed. And so everything in there was all together meshing around with each other. So it doesn't stay nicely contained, only messing with that one thing. Right. <laughs> it's sort of just, you know, it gets all around into other things. And so that's how we create the quagmire, right? It's like, it just continually, uh, like you said, until you can undo it. So uh, that kind of leads me to uh, this next piece, which is using the Akashic Records to help you transform these life patterns so you don't have to keep trying to overcome them. So people, I hear it a lot, and I'm sure you do too. I'm trying, just tell me what to do. I'm thinking about it. How does the Akashic Records help you basically jump over those hurdles? Because those are in and of themselves blocks and limitations right there. The minute you hear yourself saying those words, right? So we know this. So now how does the Akashic Records help somebody so that they don't get caught in those traps? Right. Well, of course, we know what we know. And when you're learning to open your records and speak to your record keepers, these are pure beings of light. This is, you know, not your grandma or not somebody you used to know who's crossed over. These are beings of, of pure divine essence, their source energy. And they have been keeping your records for hundreds and thousands of years. And when you ask them, you often get a totally different answer than you could ever think of. So to me, that was probably one of the biggest um, aha moments I had when I moved from doing more um, intuitive energy healing to really being able to open the records and have whole long <laughs> conversations with the record keepers. They told me things that I never imagined, such as... <laughs> I'll yes, tell you. Tell me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I said... Um, what is stopping me from really accessing my own gifts and abilities from stepping into my power? Now, the interesting thing with the word power is a lot of people veer away from it because they think of power as a negative thing. But when you're standing in your own soul's power, that is one of the greatest um, alignments, right? This is you're totally aligned with your soul and your divine work and your purpose. And you really become a very powerful being because you're really in alignment. So I said, what is stopping me from stepping into my power to moving out bigger in the world to really accessing even, you know, more powerful healing gifts? And they said, well, <laughs> There was a lifetime very long ago. You were an Incan uh, priest. And this was back in the time when there was sacrifice, right? So if you remember any of the stories about the Incan priest, they would cut out the heart of the sacrificial person, right. sacrifice that person, that heart to the gods. And they said, you were a priest with, um, that was very vindictive. It was like, you enjoyed it. You, <laughs> you, it was it's like, what a great thing. I get to kill people, right? And I went, here. right? Holy yeah. moly. Um, and and it, it just made so much sense. It's kind of like, you know, how when all of the hairs in your body stand up or every part of your body tingles and you were like, oh. Like that was truth. And when I cleared that, I was able to access just more information, more energy, because that fear of my soul that I would do something um, bad with my power again was yeah. keeping me yeah. small. Right? Miss so the power is that. such a big one. Yeah. yeah. We don't talk about a lot. But that is a huge one, Lisa. 
that people have that they don't even realize that they will misuse their gifts and abilities and their power. So brilliant. That is, I have to say, that is one of the biggest ones that I've come across for myself. Uh, I had said many years ago that um, you couldn't pay me to open up a witchcraft book. And that is because I too have had many past lives where I was a witch. And now we all want to think to ourselves that we were always good. (laughs) So that's the hardest part, right? For people like, what? I was bad? Oh my God. And so I always tell people, look, there's no judgment in healing, right, Lisa? There's no judgment. It does not matter. We just need to clear it and move on so we can be of the highest light and highest vibration. And that's really what matters. So everybody who's listening, realize that being able to release it is the goal. That's the beauty of this work that Lisa's offering is you've got to move past it. It's the only way to clear the blocks. You have to be willing to let it go. You, I mean, it's not even about having to know every single one, is it, Lisa? No, 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 not at all. Because, you know, to me, if we, you know, the record keepers always say there's levels and layers. So if you have been killed, that means that you have killed someone. And Absolutely. I say, you know, often we do it in circumstances of war. But honestly, we do it all. That is the experience of being a human. So if you've yes. been killed, you know, you've killed someone. If you've been raped, you've raped someone. That's honestly, right. you know, Victim, it's, it's victimizer. It goes together. <laughs> yeah, that's the growth. This is all about your soul understanding and learning. And again, coming back to the place of compassion and love and forgiveness. Those are the big keys to awakening. And so the lovely thing with the records is that one, of of course, because they're just pure source energy, there is never any judgment. It's, it's just what it is. So even when they told me like, oh, you were an Incan priest, (laughs) you liked killing people. It was like, oh, well, that explains that, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I love it. I love it. See, now I don't feel so bad. No, Uh, as I said, I mean, Yes, we've all experienced, like you said, both sides and in the middle. I mean, it's like that's part of the experience of being human and even being beings from other dimensional existences is that, you know, we have been part and parcel of various things that have gone well and various things that have not gone well. And we are here in order to basically heal those events that separated us from our own soul, from our own connection to source. I mean, that's what happens after you've had so many lives where things have not gone well for whatever reason. And that's when we close ourselves down. I mean, that's really what I feel we're here about is that we close ourselves down and we now need our, you know, it's almost like a timeout in a way. (laughs) You need your timeout from the big game board and you need to hunker down and release what needs to be released and bring yourself back into wholeness. Yes. And yes, absolutely. And, and I would say this is the time. So, um, really, I mean, it's been going on, well, it's been going on since about 1960 and that really goes back to the beginning of the age of Aquarius. Now I'm actually old enough to (laughs) <laughs> to remember that song and that play, um, you know, having been born in the 50s uh, and, and growing up in California. But what the record keepers told me uh, a long time ago is they said, we pulled this vibration of the Akashic field away from Earth 1,000 years ago during the Dark Ages, what became known as the Dark Ages, because people misuse the information for their own gain. And now it's time, now that we're realigned to this new age of Aquarius, now that we're realigned with the galactic center and we can make this change, we really can flip into this higher dimension. And they said, this is your birthright. It is time that everyone is able to understand the plan they made as a soul and to have this very direct guidance. So 
not only is it useful in clearing the blocks and understanding, you know, why you have these karmic patterns and what they're about and clearing the old energy, it helps you to connect with your soul family, to create um, higher vibrational, more uh, unconditional love relationships with everyone in your life. And they're here to guide you as you go forward. So I, you can open your Akashic Records every day and talk to your record keepers and say, you know, what's my next step? If I want to do this, where do I put my energy? So kind of another quick little story is when I first was writing my first book, the record keeper said, like, write the other book. And I'm like, I can't get one book done. How am I going to write another book? And they just it. said, uh -huh. they, they told me how. They said, two steps. <laughs> Transcribe really? your work. Happen. Get your friend Meg to help you. <laughs> and I did. And that book won um, a book contest that I was in. And I won an agent who got me a publisher and who got my, my book, The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records, published. So they can literally help you. Not only can they help you with the how, you know, give me baby steps. But I always say that when you're in alignment with your soul's path and purpose, they are all about helping and supporting you. So getting me an agent and a, you know, and a publisher, I mean, like, I didn't do that. That was all between, like, the record keepers wanting me to bring this work out to the world. And you know, it just was kind of all perfect. So it really supports you in all these unseen ways also when you're connected and in alignment with your soul path. Wow. Okay. So part of that is that's what we reference when we talk about the miracles that seem to occur, but it's actually because you are tapped in and listening. That's the fastest way to receive miracles is to be tapped in and to listen, right, Lisa? Right, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Despite what your mind is like, I'm trying to write this book over here, why the heck would I go and write a sec this other book? What? I mean, I can totally hear that because I, I know, right? I totally am with you here. Like we're, we may be singing along thinking, oh, this is what I'm gonna do, and then boom, it changes. And you have to be willing to just let let that happen. I think that's the hardest part for human beings to do is because, you know, there's so much that happens where, you know, just let's say your partner, your husband, your wife, your whoever says to you, well, I thought you were going to do this and this is what you're doing. You spent all this money to do blank, right? And people get caught in that because they're like, well, I did. And I, and yeah, I thought that was the right thing. And what they're missing is that that was the right thing to get you right to this new spot that you need to then let go of that and allow the new river to start running. I mean, that flow to happen. And I think that I know for myself, that's been a journey for me to just let go of stuff. You know, I'm on my way doing something and then suddenly it's, okay, we're going to take a right turn here. And you're like, what? Yep. Oh my God. I was so um, kind of in resistance, but because, you know, I was trying to finish this book I had started four years earlier and I'm like, okay, I'm really good with a deadline. I spent 15 years in advertising as a production director. I'm really good with a deadline. So I'm like, I want a deadline. There is this contest that will make me get this book done. And so halfway, you know, to the deadline when they said, write the other book. I'm like, what? Okay, I'm, me and my hands on my hips. I'm like, okay, tell me how. I'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you listening. Just... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a good girl. I'm listening, you know. And they gave me two simple steps. And I'm like, and the person they told me to contact, I thought, oh, I'm so off the hook because she'll say no. And, and I call her up and she goes, you know, that's so funny. I was thinking I haven't worked on a book project in a, over a year. And I was just thinking it would be fun. She's like, yeah, I would love to. <laughs> I was like, wow. right. Thank you, God. What else can you say? Thank you, God. Right. What was the other step that they told you? So what they was told contact me. the person and then? Right. Transcribe my, um, my workshop, which was all recorded. 
right. they said, this is, you know, so you just have to have it transcribed. That was easy, right? right? It's one thing to transcribe a workshop, you know, uh, uh, 12 hours of yes. me talking. It's another thing to turn that into a book. And my Absolutely. friend Meg did an amazing job just turning it into my book, The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records. And um, That's I couldn't have done it without her. <laughs> you know, I, I have to be honest and tell you that I have had some of my, my workshops and stuff transcribed with just thinking the same mm -hmm. and trying to figure it out myself how to rewrite it and i can tell you i stopped right there i was just <laughs> okay i just i can't do it because it's almost like i'm you're too close to it yourself and then you're like well i would like to say it this way and then i don't know i got bogged down in my own thinking so i applaud you for just handing <laughs> over because that's the other part that can be a little bit hard sometimes is giving away it's, it's almost like a, your baby. It's like, well, this is all my stuff and I should be able to get it correctly. So again, it's stepping out of your own ego self and allowing the process that you've been guided to do just to do it. And I think that the more we do this, the easier it gets to be able to step into what you've been guided to do. And I know that I find this with people that uh, write in and, and call in is that they always have in their mind the one or two only possible solutions to whatever their issue is, right? Because that's the only thing their mind can come up with. Like you were saying, like I, can, I have to write this book because I've been writing it for four years and I'm really dedicated to getting it done and I'm gonna make myself do it. And it's almost like in making yourself, you actually create the barrier, right? Because you're trying to push and push and push. And it's so exhausting. And then, <laughs> when you can actually just let it go and follow the guidance, even though it doesn't make logical sense, because I know you're gonna say and agree with me, it never <laughs> makes sense logically, does it? No. <laughs> no, but it's the highest and best. And sometimes it does, I mean, you know, there are a lot, of, but that, that book, I have, two, I have two published books and that book has never been finished, <laughs> so. See, that just wasn't the book. It was just the one you thought it was going to be. But I bet you, you've right. used that material in many other ways. And sometimes right. that's you know, yeah. positive. Right. And what the record keeper said, and so here again, this is a huge advantage to being able to have this conversation. Yeah. When I say things like, you know, what about that book? They said, it, it's an autobiography. They said, when people know you and people care, then you can finish it. But they don't know you, they don't care. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that makes sense. That's harsh. <laughs> they can be a little harsh, but they're honest. It's no, pure truth, and when it's true, you go, yes. yeah, that's true. Absolutely. No, truth is important. It's also the fastest way. I mean, everybody wants the fastest way, okay? But I do. I want, give me the way that allows me, I remember when I first started with my business coach a couple years ago, and I said, well, kind of the way I see it is like, imagine a river, okay? And to get where I wanna go, I'm gonna take like, there's five big rocks crossing this river, right? And I could see myself like jumping to the first rock and then the second rock and, and like to get over the river. And she took a second and she goes, well, what if you could just jump over the river? Would you be willing? to do that? And I was like, well, yes, I don't know how to do it, but yeah. And so that's the same that what you're talking about here. It's like, do you need the long, slow path? Or are you willing to go directly to the source and figure out, be told, be guided, be given the information that you need to jump over that river and get where you want to be anyway, versus that you know, long roundabout place, that long roundabout way. So when we talk about, I mean, I know for myself, that's always my question is what is it that I need to do in order to get where I'm wanting to go? And we, I, I know for myself, I believe that a lot of power is in the question. So when you're talking to your Kaushik record keepers, how does that work? Is it, I mean, I use the higher self piece mostly, 
So when you're talking to them, how does that conversation go? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I ask the good questions, right? <laughs> um, yeah, they're complicated, actually. So yeah, I'm like, well, oh, you know, that's what there's always you know, want to know. Right. Well, here's another fascinating, you know, tidbit about the Akashic Records is they often will give me three, four, five answers for one question because we are multi-layered, right? Yeah. So, um, and, and again, you can work through them. They're all valid and valuable, right? So um, to me, I ask many questions about a situation. We never want to ask um, really yes, no, because that doesn't get you very far. So I'll tell you a good story about that because yeah. it's kind of easier to. So, so I had a client that I worked with um, and she was all about a new relationship. She had been, um, you know, divorced for five years or something. She's like, when's the guy coming? When's Mr. Wright going to show up? And so we did a lot of work and a lot of clearing and, you know, there's always emotional pain and different challenges and traumas and we worked on patterns. So even around that one question, there was a lot to do. So, um, you know, this kind of brings us back to a, a, a talk we were having um, earlier about, you know, I always wish that I could just heal somebody totally in an hour, but we're so much more complicated than that. You know, that would be such a one dimensional person. If you could be like, oh, here's your problem. Let's just get rid of that. Right. right. It's like right. she wanted a relationship, but she had emotional pain and trauma from the last relationship. She had some um, childhood abuse that needed to be healed before she could really call in the one. She had all sorts of other kinds of um, patterns and beliefs. So when you look at a situation, I want a new relationship, what's blocking you? If you were really, really ready, that person would probably show up. Yes. But yes. otherwise, there are childhood things. There might be past life stuff. But let's mm -hmm. even leave the whole past life out and go with, you know, our childhood, our relationship to our parents, to our, our previous, you know, um, uh, whatever, significant partners, it, it, and on and on. So anyway, so we had done a lot of that work. And she asked again, and I saw this picture. It was like a little Polaroid snapshot. And... It was a guy standing by a white truck in um, a plaid shirt, and he had a little bald spot on the back of his head. It was so specific. I was like, wow, that was weird. That was so specific. And so I told her, I said, I'm hearing you're going to meet this guy in the next two months. So about um, three weeks later, she calls me up and she goes, I met him. I mean, like the picture. I was at this... Um, this event, this gathering, and I met this guy. I was out of state at a friend's house, and so he, he, we, it was just like love at first sight, you know. So I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Okay, so <laughs> another month later, she calls me up again, and she says, this is not going anywhere. He's looking for a mother. He doesn't want a partner. He wants somebody to cook and to clean and to take care of him. That's all he wants. He's like, what happened? How did this show up? And I said, let's see, what question did you ask? You know, when? When is someone coming? When is someone <laughs> <laughs> when am I going to find a relationship? I said, we didn't ask her, you know, you didn't say, I'm looking for a spiritual man who um, is really self-sufficient, who I have a support contract with, who is, you know, who would like to um, support me and my work as I support him and his work, you know, who has a deep, open heart, who is compassionate and forgiving. You know, it's like, when you ask a question, <laughs> it is really important what you're asking, not just when is some guy going to show up? That's what oh, that guy was. And we're like, here's gosh, one. <laughs> this is such a big topic right here. This is, this is the crux of so much in the energetic world because I feel 
that people have the impression that our intention somehow translates. <laughs> so like what do what I mean by these words is translated somehow with my intention that that's what I meant, right? right. And I does that work? <laughs> well, now here's the interesting other yeah. side of that story is that it got her to step out of her own comfort zone and actually step into a relationship after not being in relationship at all for five years. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that guy will show up as a stepping stone or that woman will show up as a stepping stone, like just to right. get you kind of out the door. Mm -hmm. And the other thing it did was it made her conscious about what she wanted and what she didn't want. Sometimes we're just kind of, wanting Mr. Wonderful or Mrs. Right to show up. And we haven't really thought very deeply about what does that mean? So it gave her the time or, or the, the realization that it was important for her to decide who she wanted, that she really wanted, because she was very spiritual, a spiritual man to do these things with her, to go to events, to have a meditation practice, to go to yoga, whatever that might have meant for her, right? So she realized how important it was, not just to be like, yes, Mr. Right, what does that mean? Is to write out and to, to decide. So when those people show up, if you meet somebody who has no idea, <laughs> you know, what you're talking about and you're, cause you're talking some spiritual jargon and their, their eyes glaze over, you might think, well, this is definitely not the guy, even though he's cute or the woman, even though she's beautiful, this is not the person for me because I want someone who's on a spiritual path with me. Right? So it does become very important to go from not just the big, I'm looking for a relationship to this is what I'm choosing to bring into my life. This is specifically what I choose to create in my life now. Yes. yes. I don't have anything more to say to that. <laughs> I mean, this is very important. All of what you have brought forward, it's all part of that evolutionary process that we're talking about that is a mixture of healing and creating. And that's what has to happen. We have to heal the stuff that's in the way of keeping us from creating that next greatest soul evolution that we're meant to be living. And when we talk about conscious creation, that's what we're talking about, having that consciousness to ask the question, to know what it is that's in our alignment. I know that for, you know, sometimes if you think to yourself, I'm gonna win the $400 million lottery. And somewhere in yourself, you can feel like, yeah, the odds of that are like so slim. Like you already know it's torpedoed before you even get started. But that people, when they tap into that feeling with regard to other things, they will know if there's a block or they're not really in alignment with what it is that they're saying that they want. And that's your first indicator to do this connection that you're talking about, to find out what's up, you know, how do I overcome it or is it in my alignment or, you know, what's the problem? Why does, why do I have this discordance, right? right. Within me. Because that's your first indicator that you can wish upon a star as much as you want, but that isn't going to change anything if you don't take some divine action. And by connecting with the record keepers, your record keepers, that gives you like the tool to the roadmap for you, which is what we're saying. Absolutely. You get to say, is this in my highest and best interest? Is there something I'm missing? Is there something, right, that's hidden from me that I'm not seeing? Is there a, a higher and better choice or path for me? Yeah. So those was, are great one questions. One of my favorite questions is, is there a better question? Right. <laughs> yes. 
because sometimes our mind yeah. honestly doesn't come up with the best question. And I, you know, I'm known as the practical spiritualist because I love the mind part. Okay. I love the fact that I can still use my mind in spirituality. That's what I think is so cool, but there's a place for the mind, right? It gets, it gives you enough to springboard and then the rest is up to the guys upstairs. Uh, to your own right. guidance and uh, to your connection in your soul and to your record keeper. So I would love it if you would share about this course that you're, you're giving and this class that is going to be live with you this Saturday. Right. So this Saturday is, um, I'm going to say it's a little bit more of an interview. I'm going to do a beautiful about 10 minute guided visualization to take you into your own, your own Akashic records. We go into your Akashic garden, which is really beautiful. And then we bathe in the river of forgiveness. So it's a lovely meditation. And when we come back into the records, before we come back into our bodies, we get to, um, reclaim one of our gifts and talents that is available for us energetically. And so I'll do this, that beautiful meditation. We'll talk really again more about the Akashic Records and the seven week online workshop that I'm offering through the Shift Network. And so um, you will hear more about that. And I'll just kind of share briefly now um, what that is. So June 18th, the first class starts, it's going to be um, a live video uh, workshop online, of course, and two hours each time. And I teach you the five-step wisdom prayer system that the Akashic Record Keepers gave me many years ago. And I have used this to teach thousands of people around the world online because I love the brain too. <laughs> and what I found was when we go to esoteric in this sort of work, our personality, our ego wants to jump in. And when I used to teach people to open the records, the first question they would have is, how do I close them? It would be like, I'm afraid to open them if I can't close them. And so the record keeper said, We'll give you this five-step wisdom prayer system. We set this beautiful intention. We set the energy. I teach guided visualizations to help and support you. I teach you the um, soul lineage access prayers. In this workshop, there are three different access prayers that are connected to different um, kind of galactic soul lineages. So if you know that you're a starseed, and honestly, we're all starseeds. Some of us have been here on earth for thousands and thousands of years. And, and I'm one of those. I've been here forever. But, but also very, very galactic. So mm -hmm. most of us have both. We're just not conscious of it. So when I teach you how to access your own Akashic record, we use three different vibrational keys three different vibrational keys. So you get also a glimpse into um, that galactic part of you. But all three of the vibrational keys, they're all access prayers to open your records. You get to talk to your own Akashic record keepers. And so over the seven week workshop, we do all sorts of exercises. We go in and out. We get information before we open the records. And then we open the records and realize how different that information can be coming from our record keepers. We do some clearing tools, um, seven healing prayers. So, so many processes in this, what is that, about a 14-hour workshop live each week with me. And so you will get really proficient at opening your own Akashic records and conversing with your record keepers. And I even give you 30 questions to ask um, so that you're supported by understanding how to start to go deeper. And one of those questions is just that. Is there a better question to ask, right? Because sometimes we're asking the wrong question or it's not time or you know that's not where you're going to go deep and sometimes we say you know is there something that's hidden from me 
that I can now know? So there's important questions in those 30 questions to take you deeper and deeper into your records. Um, so anyway, it's an amazing course. I love, love, yes. love teaching this. And I really know this is time to bring this work back to the planet. I agree because it is such deep work that you're talking about. I mean, every one of those topics, gosh, you could do a whole seminar just on that. I mean, the soul lineage piece, the galactic multidimensional piece, huge. People don't realize maybe quite how important that is in order for you to be fully reconnected with your soul and you know the whole immersion and merging of that. Uh, you with your soul has mostly to do, not anything to do with your current life, actually. It is all to do with that soul lineage piece. I mean, right there. <laughs> right there. <laughs> right? For we can go off on another hour, Jan. I mean there. It, right? <laughs> because this, all of these things that you described, it's a perfect course. It's a perfect course in getting people that rounded understanding of what they need with enough information and like you said the the information for how to tap in and what to say and what to do and how to invoke what it is that you need in order to get through whatever it is that you because every soul has had their own path i i have never met another person that i have worked on as a client that ever had exactly the same anything as anybody else and so all of us have had our own experiences. And so you have to be able to tap in and get the information as it applies to you. And so for when people don't really know, like when they attend an activation, let's say, or a clearing and healing and activation, and they'll go, well, that I didn't really feel anything. Well, it's because that isn't tailored to you. That's tailored to the general overall collective of the people that have come together. And so that's the difference. It's not that it wasn't potent, it's that you needed something in particular perhaps before that could actually be useful to you, right? And so this is the reason for being given the tools to tap in. I mean, I can't get over how important this is because when you and I started talking before we began this interview, you know, I started on my healing journey in my 20s. And, you know, back then we were at Reiki level. And that's what we were using to help release things. And it took a really long time to get, you know, where you and I are in our own respective places. It took many, many, many years. And the changes and the shifts were just so much slower. Oh, my goodness. And so, I mean, I, I, right there, I was just thinking of that lappy taffy, you know, how you pull, pull, pull. <laughs> and that's what clearing and releasing was like, right? It was just like that lappy taffy went on forever. And so what, what Lisa is describing is kind of like the short cut to that whole cycle of events that's gone on so yeah. i think that's fantastic i love it i think that's beautiful and i really am excited that you're offering this so for everyone if you would if you want to sign up and get started and listen to lisa when she gives her official uh beginning discussion about this course and more of what it does for you you can go and sign up at cwclight, L-I-G-H-T dot com forward slash Akashic Records, A-K-A-S-H-I-C Records with an S, R-E-C-O-R-D-S. So cwclight.com forward slash Akashic Records, and that will get you signed up for Lisa's court for her interview on Saturday, June 1st, yes? Right, with plenty of replay. It's no worry plenty if you can't. Replay. So don't worry if you missed it <laughs> because her course doesn't start till June 18th. And then I'm sure you'll get replays of that as well, which is what is so important. I, this time in our planetary ascension, what do you think is the most important thing for people to know? <laughs> ah, I guess again. <laughs> Come on. Give it to me, Lisa. You know, I just want the, give me the sound bite for what is it, if they could choose something to empower themselves, 
because we talked earlier about it. it is all about being reconnected to your power. It really, really is. So honestly, what the record keeper said is just take a step. Yes. <laughs> take that hard. first step. <laughs> it's not even hard. Oh my God, that is so true. It's so simple. It's taking that first step, just saying yes. I find it's in the yes that the next miracle comes. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my huge learning when I told you the book story and they said, write the other book. And I was like, what? I have a month and you're crazy. And I haven't done this in four years. And it was like, I just got that. Just say yes. And I said, okay, give me the baby steps. Give me little steps I can do. And that's what they said. Here are two. So they're saying, this is fu so funny because they're so um, clear very often, the record keepers, and, and I'll hear them in these very clear, just like say yes and take a step. You don't have to worry about where that road goes and where you're going to end up because it's a journey. It's not a destination. So take a step in the positive way into the Akashic Records, which is going to naturally raise your vibration. So if you're on an ascension path and you want to raise your vibration so that you are moving with ease into the fifth dimension, I would say the Akashic Records is one of the easiest ways to do that because the records themselves are in a way higher dimension than just the fifth dimension. So when you open your records and you hang out in that energy, you are naturally starting to shift yourself into these higher dimensions. I start to teach you in the second course to move outside of time and space, which is like the 11th dimension. So working in the records is going to easily help your ascension. So they say, just say yes and take a step. <laughs> Absolutely. Because most of the work that is done is outside of time and space. Absolutely. Because that's the fastest way to actually get anything done is when you're not when you're not uh, constricted or restricted by the rules of a certain dimension. And that's really key and important. If people don't understand that, you definitely want to sign up for her course because you, like a lot of times what we say, I think is gibberish to people. Like it just, I mean, it always reminds me of Charlie Brown's teacher's voice. It goes, wah, 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 wah. Because I know when I first started on my path, people would say things. I'd be like, I don't know. I didn't even hear you. I, what? And it's not that I didn't hear the words. It's that there was nothing for which I could relate them or they didn't mean anything to me. I didn't understand it. But there wasn't any way for me to, to get it because I just wasn't energetically in a place to understand. And that's the difference. It's not that I didn't have the mental capacity. It was that energetically i wasn't at a frequency to under to unlock the meaning of what was being said and so if you don't understand this it doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you what it means is it's time to just say yes and go with it because it's not about actually just mentally understanding that's when you free yourself when she's saying yeah oh absolutely and of course this is easy because you can just say yes and Come to the free, you know, call Absolutely. and do a beautiful guided visualization and learn more and see if it resonates. And, and if not, you know, then that's fine. And if it does, you just open a huge door for yourself. Yes. And we congratulate you ahead of time for just saying yes and taking the divine aligned action of signing up at cwclight.com forward slash Akashic Records with an S so that you can just see just allow yourself. It's like watering a flower. <laughs> and it just gets better and better. I mean, I just recently was saying that, you know, if I had known 12 years ago when I started on this particular part of my journey, 
where I would be today, I think I would have hightailed it a heck of a lot faster and sooner <laughs> versus putting it off and resisting. Because you're like, it just gets better and better. And that essentially is what we're here to experience is this blossoming and opening and experiencing all that is here while we're in our most divinely attuned aspect of ourselves. So, wow. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. I just love connecting with your energy. You're just such a beautiful being. And I just wish you the best of luck and congratulations on being on the Shift Network. That is in and of itself in this third dimension. <laughs> Honest to God, you get a medal. Really. Uh, that's fantastic. And, and I'm so proud of you just because you have continuously, long before it was cool or fashionable, Put yourself out there and you continue to do so with love and joy. So really, my love, thank you. Thank you for being thank here. You. Oh, thank you so much. It is such a pleasure. And I'm so excited to have connected with you and just find another soul sister. It's beautiful. Thank I you. Know, it's thank so fun fun. That's what we want for everybody who's listening to get to connect <laughs> yeah. with your soul family and the people who support you and love you no matter what you're doing. It is, honest to God, it gives me shivers. This is what we all are here to experience, and we want you to have that too. So we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. I'm going to be there too because I want to connect and receive my next level because that's the other thing. There's nobody too advanced. This is, God, it's so important. The more we all connect, the higher and faster we all go. This is the key here. There's always something for you, whether you think you're the most advanced or the least advanced there's always something just for you. So we look forward to having you with us. And thank you, Lisa, for sharing. And thank you, everyone who's listening today. Namaste. Much love.